Hey everyone, this is Peyton. Let's create a patch together in the Novation Components Editor. I am here in the Editor tab. I actually have the standalone program installed here on my desktop. I have up a template patch that is essentially the default initial patch, but I have a couple of macro parameters that are already mapped. Macro number one here is mapped to cutoff frequency. Number two is mapped to the envelope to mod, which determines how much the filter envelope modulates the filter frequency. Number three is mapped to amplifier and filter envelope attack. And number four is mapped to amplifier and filter envelope release. I like to make these first four macros the exact same for every patch because these are the parameters I tweak most often when performing a song live. I almost always use the filter cutoff to bring synth parts in and out of focus, and the various envelope parameters let me change most patches from something like a lead or arpeggio to a softer pad sound. Depending on the type of patch I'm creating, the last four macros are mapped to something different every time. These could be parameters such as LFO speed and modulation depth, distortion level, chorus level, oscillator pitch, and so on. Again, it just depends on what kind of patch I'm going for. I think in this tutorial, I'd like to make a pad sound. Pads are useful for exactly what they sound like, padding out other tracks in a song and filling in empty frequencies. They usually utilize long attack and release times, as well as heavy modulation. I have a short pattern already sequenced in the circuit, and if I play my template patch, you can hear that it's just a basic sawtooth wave right now. I can bring the filter in and out here with the first macro. I can increase the attack and release. If I bring the filter down, I've already kind of got a basic pad sound here. Uh, something a little bit more subtle with a long attack and release time. Let's move to the oscillator page. You can see I have a sawtooth here on oscillator 1, and oscillator 2 is turned off here in the mixer. One common tactic to widen the sound of a pad is to slightly detune a second oscillator. Let's try that by switching oscillator 2 here to a sawtooth, bringing it in through the mixer. I'm going to turn on the pattern here. and it's detuned just a couple of cents here. Great. Another tactic you could try is tuning the oscillator up or down an octave. Maybe decreasing it a little bit. That way you get multiple octaves when you play a single note. For this patch though, let's just stick with two oscillators at the same octave and detuned a little bit. I also like to add a little bit of noise, just enough to add some texture to the sound without being too noticeable. The circuit also offers different wavetables as oscillator sources. If you look right here, you've got the whole list of them. Uh, they also offer interpolation and index options. And you can get some very interesting and unique sounds not possible with a traditional analog synth this way. Uh, a common trick on wavetables is to modulate the index with an LFO. On the circuit's modulation matrix, the index value is actually labeled as oscillator 1 pulse width or oscillator 2 pulse width. So if you're looking to modulate the wavetable index, just know that it's labeled as something different. There are lots of other different oscillator parameters you can modify, such as V-sync, density, ring modulation, but we'll just stick with our basic detuned sawtooth for this tutorial. Let's move to the filter page. You can see that even though I have the filter set to a lower value, if I play my sequence, it is all the way open right here. Uh, the noise is a little bit too loud, so let's turn that down a little bit. So the filter is all the way open, and the reason for that is I actually have my macro right here set to cutoff frequency, and this is all the way up. So if I turn this down to zero, now it's as if the filter value is 52 here. I have the resonance set to a low value and keyboard tracking is turned all the way up. For those not familiar with keyboard tracking, it essentially changes the filter frequency 
of a note relative to its position on the keyboard. When turned off, all keys have the same filter frequency applied, but when turned on, higher keys have a higher filter frequency applied. Let's listen to what that sounds like. This is off. And as we turn it on, you can hear that the higher notes have a higher filter frequency applied to them. It's kind of subtle, but it makes a big difference if you're playing notes over a large range on the keyboard. There are also multiple filter types available. You have a low pass filter where higher frequencies are filtered out above a certain point. A high pass filter where lower frequencies are filtered below a certain point. And a bandpass filter where higher and lower frequencies are filtered around a certain point. Let's switch that back to a low pass filter. Each filter also has two cutoff slopes available here. They are labeled as decibels per octave. The greater the value, the sooner frequencies are filtered above or below whatever the filter frequency cutoff point is. Here's what the difference between the two sounds like. You can hear that there are more higher frequencies let through in the 12 decibel per octave slope. Let's switch that back to 24 for our pad today. The filter also has a drive setting. This amplifies or distorts audio going into the filter, which can bring in some great sounding harmonics with certain parameters. I like to turn this up to a moderate level on the diode type. There are several other distortion types, including bit crushing and rate reducing, so it's worth checking those out. And then finally, there's an option to bypass the filter, either for both oscillators or only for oscillator one. Moving on, the circuit has three envelopes. Number one is the amplifier envelope. Number two is the filter envelope. And number three is an extra envelope that can be used for any parameter in the mod matrix. You can see that both my filter and amplifier envelopes have the same values with short attacks and releases. They are the same because I control the attack and release of them, both using macros three and four. You can see that they're both set to envelope one attack, envelope two attack here for number three, and then envelope one release, envelope two release here on number four. And they are short times because I increase the attack and release of them using the macros. This is one time where I might change the parameters for macros three and four. If I know I want the decay on the filter to be quick because a patch might make a good arpeggio, I might remap macro number three, which normally controls attack, to instead control filter decay. You can also specify how much velocity affects how these envelopes modulate their parameters. Let's move to the LFO page. The circuit has two LFOs, and there are many different shapes available for the LFO waves, ranging from classics like the sine and the sawtooth wave, all the way to gated patterns like here in the alternative section. And they even have some common scales here in the melodic patterns. And the LFOs have many parameters from key sync to delay to slew rate limiting. I could spend a whole video on the LFO section alone, which I probably will in the future. So for now, let's do something simple with the LFO and explore the modulation matrix a little bit. I would like LFO one to slowly modulate the filter cutoff to add some movement to my patch. So to do this, let's first select a sine wave. In the modulation matrix, I'll select LFO1 as a modulation source. And as a destination, down here, I'll select filter frequency. If I play my sequence and increase the depth here, you can hear the LFO is modulating the filter frequency. I can slow the rate down. Let's turn the depth down so it's just a little bit. And maybe the rate down a little bit. And 
And this LFO is running free, so it doesn't reset every time I press the keyboard. I would also like to make a tremolo effect for this patch. A tremolo is just an LFO modulating the volume of the amplifier. To do that, I'll go to mod matrix slot number two, select LFO two as a modulation source, and then select oscillator one level as a destination. I'll also need to do the same for oscillator level two and noise level since we turn those up. LFO two as a source, oscillator two level as a destination, LFO2 as a source, and noise level as a destination. This time, I'm going to leave the depth for all of those at zero, since we want to be able to control that using a macro. Before we start editing the macros, I want to show you how I set values for the macro depth. This would probably be best demonstrated with something like the filter cutoff. If I come back to macro 1 and set all values to zero, the filter cutoff will be whatever I have it set in the filter page, which is pretty low. What I want to do here is set the value to the lowest value I want to be able to reach. If I turn the filter any lower, it's almost inaudible. I don't want to go quite that low, so I'm going to set the filter frequency to just about where I can start hearing it again. I'll come back over here to the Macros tab, and I will set the macro to its maximum value, 127. This doesn't change anything yet because I have to set the depth here. And I'm going to start increasing the depth until I get to the maximum value I want to have. So right about there, the filter is all the way open and I only have to go to 30 here on the depth. I don't set the depth all the way to the maximum because this allows me to have a little bit finer resolution when I'm changing values on the macro. If I set the depth to the maximum, you'll hear that the filter doesn't actually start closing until I get about halfway down the values of the macro. About 55. Which means that anything above 55 is basically useless because the filter is already opened up all the way. So by setting the depth to whatever the maximum value I want it to be, that affords me a little bit finer control over the macros up here. Let's get back to making the tremolo effect. Here in the macros page, I'm going to select macro five. This one will control the rate of the LFO. So I'm going to select LFO to rate as the destination. In macro six, I'll select mod matrix two as a destination. I'll also need to select Mod Matrix 3 and Mod Matrix 4 as destinations, since those are controlling oscillator 2 and noise levels. I'll now set the depth for each of those as a negative value since I want an increasing macro value to decrease the volume of the amplifier according to the rate of the LFO. I'll now set the depth for each of those at a negative value since I want an increasing macro value to decrease the volume of the amplifier according to the rate of the LFO. Now let's go and set the minimum speed that we want for the LFO. Right now, this is set to key sync and we don't want that. So we're gonna set the sync style to free. That's probably as slow as we want the LFO to go. So now let's set the maximum value. Back here in macro five, we'll turn it up all the way.
Finally, let's take a look at the effects page. On here, you have access to either a chorus or phaser effect, a three band EQ, and a global distortion. The chorus on the circuit is fantastic, and I use it on a lot of my patches to add some stereo image. If I bring that in here, you probably can't hear it because I am recording in mono because my audio interface only has two inputs and my microphone is taking the other one. The EQ is great for controlling unwanted frequencies. I find that many of my pad patches need a cut in the mids and the lows. Otherwise, it ends up just being a muddy mess. I also end up boosting the lows on quite a few patches I intend to use as bases. Finally, the global distortion can add a little extra saturation with the same distortion types as what is available in the filter drive. In the settings page, you have the option to select whether this patch is monophonic or polyphonic. I almost always choose polyphonic because that allows me to play multiple parts on a single synth track. Because you're limited to two synth tracks on the circuit, I'm often playing both a bass and a solo or lead sound on the same track. Especially if you have filter tracking turned up, this works fairly well. You do run into problems if you want to apply reverb with a long tail to that track because that ends up muddying the sound of the bass, so you have to be careful with it. You can also include portamento or glide and choose the default keyboard octave when selecting the patch. We have two unused macros here, so I'll probably assign those to something like chorus for this one and distortion level for this one. Let's take a listen to our pad right now. So right now we have a pretty generic, but a usable pad sound. 